morning everyone and welcome to RJ Tech Hub's Remote I.O. and Controller Technical Webinar. Today we'll be focusing on Crevice's lineup of industrial remote I.O.s and uh, remote I.O. controllers. Our main focus today would be introducing Crevice, um, what they're all about, typical applications where Crevice has been used in the past, as well as an overview of the industrial or field bus um, controllers as well as field bus network adapters. Um, then we'll take a look at the programming software used for uh, Crevice's lineup of controllers and um, their FNIO series as well as the programmable IOs and also the field bus remote IOs. Then I'm going to take you through an example of setting up a Crevice uh, network adapter with uh, Siemens's TIA portal software. And then we'll take a look at some uh, typical application examples where uh, Crevice fits in nicely. So who is Crevice? What does Crevice stand for? Uh, Crevice, the name, comes from creative vision. So um, Crevice is a leader in the um, manufacture and design of remote I.O. solutions as well as uh, visual inspection solutions um, for typically this um, PCB and semiconductor manufacturing markets. Crevice has over 20 years experience with remote I.O. and vision automation development uh, with many OEM partners as well which makes them a trusted partner, especially for RJ Connect as well as around the world. Some typical applications where Crevice has been used in the past, uh, specifically vision automation, semiconductor industry, uh, robotics automation, IoT solutions, packing industry, CNC machines, and many, many more. Their solutions focus on um, providing remote I.O. connectivity as well as visual inspection of the manufacturing process. Now let's take a look at uh, Crevice's unique design around um, remote I.O. and the um, network adapters and also their controllers. So typically you'll find uh, with Crevice's solution you've got um, field bus connectors and sliding into these connectors, we've got our remote I.O. Now, each remote I.O. is identified by the uh, specific color. They are color coded according to the type of, the, of input or output that you will be, you'll be using. Now, Crevice has designed these um, remote I.O. slice cards, as they call them, um, with removable terminal blocks for easy maintenance and installation. So once you've um, found a problem with a card specifically, uh, you can remove the terminal block um, by simply unclipping it uh, using the one-touch uh, easy combination and separation uh, button to release the, the actual terminal block from the, the input or output card, which makes it easy to slide out the card and just replace that specific card. Each card comes with a cable ring for easy cable management. And they also are the world's first compact size IO module with up to 32 points of digital inputs or outputs, as an example. The slice type of IO makes it easy um, to expand your IO, as well as makes it a, a firm solution um, for um, installations where you have high vibration as well as um, shock. Each module also has a DIN rail locker uh, to secure it in place in scenarios like I said before. All the cars also have a um, visual inspection or a, a visual LED showing that the module's communication power and IO status is healthy. Like I mentioned before, uh, the removable terminal block makes it easy um, to maintain your I.O. system without the need uh, to rewire everything. We've also got a unique um, type of removable, um, sorry, the removable terminal block 
also allows for ins easy installation of your um, of your wiring. Um, just push the 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 crimped piece of your wire into the into the reciprocal uh, for that wire, and you're good to go. Now let's move on to some of the software that uh, Crevis provides with the um, IOS. Now IO Guide Pro is a simple to use software tool um, to make it easier for engineers and system designers to design their cable, um, or sorry, to design their cabinet layout as well as checking uh, the validation of your project to make sure that you are using the right type of modules and the right type of network adapters. And it also helps to see if you want to expand your IO to see if that specific network adapter would be um, able to handle uh, more IO cards. So in summary, it enables a review of the configuration without having actual modules um, using the iGuide Pro. And it, it also gives us the ability to plan our, our uh, cabinet layout um, by showing us the dimensions of our actual um, IO configuration. Another nice feature of iGuide Pro, specifically with the Modbus units, uh, you'll be able to view the address mapping and remap your IOs um, to a specific um, set of um, addresses uh, when using Modbus, uh, so that if you need to replace it, an older system or another type of system that used the specific uh, address mapping, uh, you could easily change your address mapping using IOGuide Pro. Just a quick look at how to use IOGuide Pro. Uh, once you've opened up IOGuide Pro, you can go ahead and click the New Project button uh, on the top left corner there, just below the File uh, menu, and you'll be greeted with a new window that uh, specifies your new project uh, parameters. So you can specify your project name and select your bus type. In this example, we used Modbus TCP IP. And once you've done that, you can browse to where you want to save your project and click OK to save your project with that specific bus type. Once you've done that, uh, you'll be greeted with your project window showing your project name that you've created, as well as your configuration and device view window and also a log window to show you any errors or um, steps that you've taken during your configuration. Once you've um, created your project, you can start adding network adapters to your project um, to build your IO configuration on top of. So first you'll need to select a network adapter before you can add IOs to that adapter. So in this case, we selected um, a Modbus adapter because our uh, project is uh, bus type is Modbus TCP. So then the network adapter list will only show uh, Modbus TCP type network adapters available for your project. Once you've selected your network adapter, you can then go ahead, um, and this is only available with Modbus though, um, but you will be able to set your IP address uh, settings for that specific network adapter. Once you are done setting your IP address, you can go ahead and click OK uh, to add that specific network adapter to your project. Now, once you've added network adapters to your project, you can go ahead and add IO modules uh, that you'll be using or that you want to be using with your network adapter. So simply click on the Add Network Modules icon and you'll be greeted with another window um, showing specific modules for that network adapter that is compatible with that network adapter. In this list, we see a couple of digital inputs and outputs, um, which is the ones that we're going to add to our project in this example. And to add a network adapter, or oh, sorry, to add an I module, you simply select the I module that you want to add, and you click on the two right-handed arrows to add them to your network adapter section over here.
once you are done adding network adapter um, IO modules to your network adapter, you can go ahead and click OK, and those modules will be added to your project. Now, here's an example of a network adapter, a GN9373, uh, which is a programmable Modbus IO unit, and with its um, attached uh, digital input and output and also analog modules. Now, you'll see in this uh, uh, device view, uh, you'll also be able to see a description of your network adapter as well as the total current being drawn by that specific IO configuration. This is important consideration to take into account when you plan your project uh, to be able to know what type of power supply you need for your project, as well as the total size for your IO configuration is important to do. Um, or to show this uh, total size to be able to plan how big your cabinet needs to be and how long your bin rail will be. It'll also show you a visual representation of all your IO modules combined with your network adapter. iGUIDE Pro also gives you the ability uh, to create documentation around your project. Uh, to give you more information and to print out the documentation for um, when your project is finished to hand over your, to your customers. Um, a very important step in any automation project is the ability to um, create documentation easily. And with IoGuide Pro, uh, it makes this a very effortless process. Um, another nice feature about IoGuide Pro is the ability um, to give you all the detailed information about specific um, network adapters and also IO cards as well. So to see more information about your IO um, module or your network adapter, uh, you simply click on the, the, the device that you want to interrogate, um, right click on that and then select properties which would open up a new properties window. This will show you some general detail about that module and then you could show uh, click the show technical data button uh, to open up a user's manual for that specific module or network adapter and this will give you uh, more detailed specifications for that module. Like I said, uh, IO documentation um, very important for a project uh, to hand over to your customers uh, you simply click on export um, your IO information or your IO documentation. You click on the make PDF file or Excel file if you prefer, and you browse to the folder where you want to save that specific file, and you click make report. Once it's done creating that report, it'll give you a, a view of that report so you can see um, all the detailed information about your project. And you'll see a project overview, a node overview, the image view that I've shown you in the previous slides, as well as the address mapping and parameters for all the modules that you will be using in your project. Now let's go ahead and look at some of the um, controller solutions from Crevis. Uh, Crevis provides a whole range of industrial PCs, controllers, IEC based programming languages. Uh, redundancy and hard swap coming soon with the new range, um, as well as remote IO stations or network adapters with um, giving the ability to create remote IO solutions. Now, we also have support for many, many industrial protocols, um, like you see in this slide, and we'll go into that more detail a, um, a little bit later on. Um, a little bit more information about Crevice's range of um, controllers. Uh, Crevice supports Codices version 3, which allows for monitoring and controlling um, on a web browser via web visualization feature of Codices. Codices also supports all five um, industrial programming languages like Ladder Logic, for example, um, and all the controllers support Modbus TCP IP. Cadences is also used by many 
um, other industrial um, controllers um, in the field. Uh, it's a very widely used programming uh, software. It's free of charge, of course, um, and it gives you that um, web visualization feature, uh, which is quite a unique feature, and we'll take a look at, at that in more detail later on. Now, uh, the FNIO series of Crevice gives us uh, the G series and the M series coming soon. Uh, the M series will give us redundancy, um, file module redundancy, as well as hot swap features. But in today's range of slides, we'll mainly be focusing on the FNIO G series uh, with their new um, 18 removable terminal block type, as well as the 32 point digital input and output type um, modules. So a deeper look into Crevice's uh, programmable I.O. units, specifically the 9400 um, series, the 9482 and 83. Um, these units uh, support Modbus TCP, Modbus, as well as EtherCAT. Now, it is worthy to take note that the EtherCAT feature is only as an EtherCAT slave. So um, in an EtherCAT system, uh, you still need an EtherCAT master to communicate with these controller units, but it gives you that ability if you have an EtherCAT system uh, already in place. Another nice um, feature to take note of is the 9483 supports the web visualization feature, um, which gives you the ability to create an HMI or SCADA system without the need of running um, any additional SCADA uh, softwares on your systems. And of course, these units are programmed using the CodeAssist software. Uh, like I said, a very widely used programming software for controllers in the field. Now, just some more information about uh, the programmable I.O. series, specifically the 9400 series, uh, supporting EtherCAT and Modbus. Um, they support OPC servers on board the units, uh, which gives you UA and DA support for OPC servers, meaning you can generate the tags on your device itself and then um, display those uh, values on your SCADA system without the need of running additional SCADA um, or OPC software on your system as well. The, like I said, the only unit that supports the web visualization feature is the 9483 um, in this specific range. Again, uh, EtherCAT and Modbus TCP support, um, but like I said, EtherCAT is only supported as a slave. Now let's take a look at the 9300 series. Um, so the 9300, also programmable through codices. However, uh, these units are only supporting Modbus and Modbus TCP. No, Ether, no, no EtherCAT support here. So these units are mostly the same as the EtherCAT units, except uh, for the fact that they don't support EtherCAT. Now OPC UA, Again, only supported in specific modules, um, specifically the 93, 72, and 73. A deeper look into the data sheet uh, will give us a, a whole range of the units. So we've got our basic unit, the 93, 71, 72, and 73. Now, the only one that supports um, DA. Uh, OPC, UA, and DA on board, again, the 72 and 73 series, as well as the web visualization only supported in the 9373. Again, Modbus TCP and UDP also master and slave support. So these devices can be used as Modbus slaves. Also, it can be Modbus RTU or TCP masters in your system. Now, a uh, new device from the uh, programmable range is the, 90, uh, the GL uh, 9000 series. We've got a range of, or specifically one module, one CPU uh, network adapter. 
and their general remote IO network adapters as slave devices for remote IO connectivity. We support a whole list of industrial protocols, including Ethernet, EtherCAT, uh, sorry, Ethernet IP, EtherCAT, Modbus TCP, CoffeeNet, and CCLink IE field. Now, these protocols are uh, generally used by the major uh, PLC manufacturers, um, for example, Siemens, Allen Bradley, Mitsubishi, and Schneider. The CPU only supports Modbus TCP, um, but it is programmable through codices as well. So, taking a look at the programmable IO unit, the GL9971, no web visualization support, no OPC service support, but it is a controller programmable through codices and supports uh, Modbus TCP and Modbus as a slave and as a master. The, the remote IO units, uh, we've got support for Modbus TCP, Ethernet IP, Profinet, CC Link IE, as well as Modbus RTU. Other field bus remote IO solutions, the GN9200 series specifically, um, these support a whole range, more than 10 um, industrial networking protocols uh, like the BusNet, Ethernet IP, Profibus, Profinet, CanOpen, BlackNet, Modbus, Modbus TCP, CCLink IE Field, Field Basic, CCLink as well as EtherCAT. So as you can see, it gives us the ability to create remote IO or distributed IO solutions for a whole range of major manufacturers um, and automation systems out there in the world. So let's go ahead and look at a setup example using Previs's remote IO units in the field uh, specifically Siemens' TIA portal software to incorporate into an existing uh, Siemens control system. So the first thing that we need to do um, to be able to incorporate a crevice unit into a Siemens automation system is we need to find a file that's called a GSDE, a GSDE ML file. Now a GSD file uh, stands for General Station Description File and it gives us the ability to control that unit and also get the information that we need, the IO information that we need from that device. So we first need to go to Crevice's website uh, to download this GSD file uh, to be able to control and view the input and output information from that device. So go to um, crevice.co.kr. The link is on this page. Go to that link and you will find the specific GSD file for this network adapter. After we downloaded the, the network adapter's GSD file, we need to extract that file because it comes as a zip file. Um, for Siemens DIO portal, we need to extract it to be able to view the actual general station description file in DIO portal. So extract it to a folder. And once you've extracted it, you can go ahead and open your TI Portal PLC project um, and ensure that all the views are closed uh, for that project so that you can import the GSD file. To import the GSD file, we need to go to Options and then select General Station Description Files or Manage G GSD Files uh, section. And this will open up a new window where we will be greeted with the page like this. Now we need to browse to the folder where we extracted our GSD file by simply clicking on the uh, browse to your source path. Open up a new um, window showing you um, your PC's folders and here you can browse to your um, extracted GSD file. Select the folder containing those GSD files and click OK. Uh, to go to your next step. Now, once you've selected the correct folder, it'll show you all the GSD files contained in that folder. Today, we'll be focusing on the Crevice unit. Like I said, uh, Crevice do, um, does have OEM partners, 
that will be listed here as well. Select the, the GC file you need to install and click on install to install that GC file. Then you'll have to wait for that GC file to be installed. Um, once that's complete, it will show you a installation result giving you an error message if there uh, was an error or that something went wrong. Uh, but if it was successful, it would show a window like this. And you can go ahead and close this window to continue. Once you've closed that window, TI Portal will then update the hardware catalog of the software so that you can select the specific newly installed hardware uh, from that GST file. Once you've done that, um, you can go ahead and open devices and networks on the left hand side of your project tree um, to show your current network devices. Now, as you can see, we've already set up a PLC, Siemens S7-1200 um, series PLC, and it's already set up for proper net communication as well. Now we need to add our network adapter to this network. And to do that, uh, you need to open up this view and then go ahead to your hardware catalog where our Previs Remote I.O. network adapter will be listed. So open up your hardware catalog and then we need to start browsing through the hardware catalog to find our network adapter. Select other field devices, go to Profinet I.O. as this is a Profinet um, network adapter. Select I.O. because that's the type of network adapter we'll be adding. Select Crevis, the brand. Crevis FNIO system, the series, and the Crevis Profinet IO, and in there you'll find the network adapter that we added in the previous slides. Double click on this network adapter to add it to our project network. Now, here you see that we've added our device, but it needs to be added to our network. So, simply click on that icon, the network um, adapter icon, click and drag that um, icon to the network that we want to add the network adapter to. If you don't want to do that, you can also select the not assigned icon on the network adapter, and then it will give you a list of compatible uh, Profinet controllers that we can add this remote IO to. In our case, we only have one controller in our network, and we can go ahead and select that network to connect our network adapter to our Profinet system. Once we've done that, it will add the device to the network. And now we can go ahead and uh, do specific network-based settings on that device. So click on, click on the network adapter icon on the net networking interface, and then select properties to go to that specific network adapter or network um, interfaces properties. Then we go to Ethernet addresses and we can select set uh, IP address in project or IP address um, set directly at device. Now with Profinet, um, the nice thing about Profinet is the fact that you can manage or um, change the parameters of your devices um, specifically using um, TI Portal as a platform. So in our case, we set our IP address in the project and we can specify our IP address in the same range as our PLC to enable communication. Once you've done that, uh, your network view should look similar like uh, to this. Um, your device will now be controlled by our Profinet controller, which is our PLC. And we can go ahead and do a little bit more um, settings. Now, with Profinet, you have two settings that you need to consider. The Ethernet address, so in other words, the IP address of the device, to be able to set parameters on that device, as well as your Profinet device name. This is very important for Profinet communication. It enables devices to know or to be able to identify devices on the network specifically using that device name. If the device name does not match the actual configured device name, Profinet communication will not be established and you won't be able to 
uh, collect IA information from that controller or from that network adapter. So go, again, click on your networking interface for your network adapter, go to properties, select Ethernet addresses again, and scroll down to the PropyNet section where you will need to uncheck the generate PropyNet device name automatically and select Profi, um, and change the PropyNet device name according to your specific settings. So um, if we go ahead and look at the um, user manual for this network adapter, you'll find that there is um, a section which explains how to name your PropyNet device. So this network adapter is called GN9287, and you'll see I appended the, the device name with dash 01. Now the reason for that is because we use, um, I use the dip switches to set the PropyNet device name um, that gives me the ability uh, to, to give the device a unique name. So in the description in the um, manual for this device, you'll see the device name is appended by the specific dip switch setting. So XX must be a value between 1 and 99. So as you saw in the previous slide, I've appended it with 01. So that means that I've set the dip switch 1 bit 0 to on. This means I gave the device name um, or the device ID uh, ID of 01, which makes the PROFINET device name the name of the controller with 01. So as you can see, I've, um, the dip switches are indicated over here and dip switch 1 is set to 1 in my case and this would make uh, this would make a unique device name in our PropyNet network. After you've added your device successfully, you will need to add the specific modules that you've installed into your network adapter. As you can see, um, once you've added your device, you need to go to device view uh, to be able to add IO modules to that device. So click on device, click on the device in your network view and click on device view, which would open up a deeper view into your network adapter. This would now give us the ability to add modules to our network adapter. As you can see, we've got a list of optional modules that we can add, like analog um, and digital modules. And in our case, we only use digital input and output modules. Simply click on the module that you want to add, click and drag it to uh, the highlighted sections here in the interface or the module uh, section of your device overview. Once you've added all the IO modules that you've inserted into your network adapter, you can go ahead and save your project and then click on the um, PLC that you uh, need to program or need to uh, effect the hardware changes and software changes to. Um, and then compile your project to ensure that the project is valid. Once you've compiled the project and it um, comes up with zero errors, uh, you can go ahead and download your project uh, to effect the changes that you've made in your PLC project. Once you've done that, you should be good to go. Um, you can go online with your PLC to ensure that everything is healthy. And as you can see in my example here, I've got my network adapter um, communicating with my PLC and they are, um, they are set correctly and the parameters are working. Now let's take a look at some application examples for um, crevices, remote IO and controller units. Um, so with a profit like the example I've just shown you or the setup I've just shown you, uh, the 9287 can be added as distributed remote I.O. Uh, for remote I.O. applications. A typical example would be you've got an existing um, Siemens PLC system with a PROFINET network, but you've added um, more machines to your, um, to your system or to your plant, and you want to add the ability to remotely monitor and control those machines. Um, but Siemens' hardware might be too expensive 
or do you need the flexibility of adding um, remote IO cards as you go, um, as well as the flexibility if you need to upgrade your PLC system to another type of PLC system, let's say uh, your uh, system needs to be upgraded to Alan Bradley, for example, but you don't want the, um, to upgrade everything all at once, change all your machines, IO cards, um, and PLCs all at once. You have the ability to just uh, remove the network adapter, keep the IO as is, and just slot in a new network adapter, and off you go. So Crevice gives you a, 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 a range of flexibility um, not previously available uh, when using or um, when using IO systems from specific manufacturers. So, like I said, uh, a distributed IO system using Crevice uh, just gives you greater flexibility when expanding your IO into the field. Another great example is you've got multiple systems using a PLC um, combination with a, a SCADA platform that gives you the ability to communicate with multiple uh, vendors of PLCs. Um, a, an example of like this would be um, a plant where you've got machine builders that use specific PLCs in their systems. Um, some machine builders prefer to use uh, Siemens hardware, others uh, prefer to use Allen Bradley as an example. And these examples, um, and you want to expand uh, the IO on those, um, on those systems, but don't want to be locked down with specific um, hardware. Uh, you can go for Crevice's remote IO, as it, like I said in the previous slide, it gives you the ability um, to be more flexible with your remote IO. Another very nice example is Crevice's uh, standalone as a standalone system. So specifically, we take a look here at the 9373 and 9483, depending on your needs. Um, but in this example, we use Crevice as a standalone system, programming using Codices. Uh, um, Codices software, uh, which gives us the ability um, to create our web visualization platform using uh, Codices software. This is free software uh, available uh, to download. You don't pay for Codices and um, gives you greater flexibility when designing your system. Now, with the programmable I.O. applications available for Crevice, um, specifically with the 9373 and 9483, it gives you the web visualization platform, which allows you to log into the unit um, remotely on any PC with a web browser and view your plant um, as you design your web visualization platform, which gives us great flexibility and without the need of buying expensive um, programming software for um, Crevice uh, or for um, your SCADA platform as well as your programming uh, platform. Now, um, this is a pre-recorded session, so I don't have any questions. I uh, can't take any questions or answer any of your questions now. So um, you can go ahead and email us at uh, info at RG Connect, or if you have our contact information, go ahead and contact us directly um, and we'll be happy to assist. So um, we've done, or we're going to do a remote access solution uh, using Moxus Remote uh, Secure Remote Access Platform. Um, please join us on the 14th of April, 2020. If you've missed it, uh, sorry, this will be on the 16th of April, Thursday. Uh, we changed the date. Uh, but please join us for this remote IO um, connectivity, or sorry, remote secure remote access um, webinar. If you've missed it, don't worry. We record all our sessions, um, either during the session or afterwards, um, all pre-recorded, um, and we'll post it on YouTube. So go ahead and um, go watch our videos on YouTube. Um, 
remember we're here for you uh, please contact us if you need any information quotes accounts orders or technical uh, we are available uh, during this um, unprecedented time so please don't don't hesitate to contact us place your orders um, and contact us if you have any technical or account related uh, queries thank you very much for watching uh, we hope to see you in the next one please go ahead and subscribe to our social media platforms we are on youtube and um, and twitter and linkedin as well as facebook um, so please go ahead